Oh hi, Taryn again with Elegant Upgrades and we've got part two of the Alice in Wonderland table set thing. This is the chair. I found it on the side of the road. I made my son carry it home for me. Not the three-year-old. I wouldn't do that. Eh, maybe I would. Who knows? So I'm starting by taking the seat off of this just so I can kind of figure out if I need anything extra for it like more padding or what kind of fabric, all that. So I'm just checking here what I'm going to need. Obviously I take off the top layer of fabric because it is just dust and you can't leave that messed up underneath your new fabric. And strangely enough, this was attached with some thread. Somebody had sewed this top on to the other top with just, yeah, weird. So you see weird stuff sometimes. So I'm just trimming the thread, taking off the, the top or the, wow, the uppermost fabric and I'm gonna leave the other fabric. There was no smells or anything really gross on it. So it'll be covered, but we can use it. It's fine. Then I'm taking my sanding sponge because it's quite a curvy chair and the sponges are really good for curves. Um, and then I'm just, it was pretty glossy with also some damage. So wherever it's super damaged, I'm kind of spending a little extra time there so it's a smooth surface and then hitting the rest of it just very lightly to give it a little bit of grit for the paint to stick to. And then since this was a side of the road piece, I'm taking my liquid sandpaper and we're gonna give it a good degreasing and it will also help the paint to adhere because it's also, you know, liquid sandpaper, it's good stuff. So I'm using a little Scotch-Brite pad that really helps kick it up a notch. And then as you can see, we primed this piece. You guys, I mean, I just had to prep it to where it matched the table, so that's what I did. So I skipped out all that because if you saw the table, you, you know, chair's the same. Now we're getting into the fun parts. So to make these match, I'm doing some really definite designs in them along with the blend. So the design points that I want to match are going to be the black with the bolder yellow color with the stripes so because it has both of those designs it's not just oh two blended pieces put together it's going to be okay these definitely go together so that will help if you're trying to put two pieces together that wouldn't typically you know belong together these two both have some fun accents like the scalloped edge on the table and the little back part of the chair has a cute little detail so they actually go really well together but if you're trying to combine things that are maybe less cohesive it's a good idea to you know create a paint job around that so these two parts this black stripe here and then we're going to do this yellow strip around as well and then add striping so those are the things that are really going to make them look like they belong together and you guys know i just i don't love using tape so i try and have a steady hand i make mistakes i mess up too it just takes practice to get better at it and then as you do, you want to use like smaller brushes and kind of the detail brushes and you can, you learn to rest your pinky on places and it's just kind of practicing and getting it or you can use tape and that's just fine if you want to use tape. I mean, I'll judge you a little bit, but it's all right. You'll get over it. I'm just kidding. Use tape if you want to. It's good stuff. I just hate it. So yeah, you're gonna see me kind of go back and forth with the colors as I'm doing things. It, that's kind of the, if you just have patience, this works out just fine. And this is the, I'm gonna say this is the hardest part. It's not hard at all, but it's the hardest part just because you're trying to be meticulous in this area. The rest of the thing isn't meticulous. It's an easy blend. So this is the only part that's really, you know, taking a minute because I'm trying to make sure that just the details are covered. And so here's where we're going to bring the two pieces together because I'm doing the same finish on the chair and the table in this area. And then even the blends don't perfectly match up. I of course use the same colors on both pieces, but they're in different areas because of how I wanted them to look on each piece. So this part is really, it's like, oh yeah, they, they go together. Yeah, 
I don't know how you would have, if you wanted to use tape on this chair. I, it would be, I think, a pain to do it over this round little eye shape. I, I don't know that even if I was somebody who enjoyed using it, that I would use it on this spot. I think I would just kind of hand paint it. And I went back and forth on this because the groove on this one wasn't very defined. So I kind of had to do it by eye and figure out where I liked the yellow to end and the black to begin. Plus you have to know with these pieces, they're hand painted. The person that wants to buy it is buying it because it's a one of a kind piece that was hand painted and they're not gonna get it anywhere else. I will say if you're doing these for a ton of money, it's probably not going to happen until, you know, you get your name out there and you're making sales based on your art. If you're just selling these locally and you don't have kind of a following, this takes longer than it does for the amount of money that you're going to get because it just, it's a labor of love and I really enjoy doing this, but I know that I'm not making the amount of money that I should for the time that I'm investing in these. Both these pieces were free, so I have no money going into this essentially, but my time went into it and that's something to consider. These are kind of just a labor of love things and they're just a fun something that you can do because you can bust out a whole bunch of solid pieced furniture and sell them quickly and that's awesome and you make more money on those because they take less time. They're very easy. They're people want solid colors because they fit into their homes really well but those pieces don't bring me joy personally to do I like them because they you know bring in money and help me pay for my shop and to save up to buy a house but stuff like these I mean these make me happy to do so that's something to consider as well and they advance your skills. So if you're trying to you know, practice with blending, this is a really, really easy blend because you don't want everything perfect, especially because it's a Alice in Wonderland piece. It's kind of whimsical and crazy. And so the blends don't need to be perfect. So I don't have a blank blending brush. I literally just go back and forth with the same brushes that I'm using for the colors and smearing it everywhere. And this is the first coat, so it's not even gonna be perfect. Everything will be perfected on the second coat but you can kind of just play with these. As you can see, I did the shelves a solid color, so that was an easy thing to do. And because I do the shelves a solid color, I know that those colors are going to be the ones that I want on the legs right next to them, because that's an easier way to blend. You don't want to pick a different color for the shelves unless you want to cut the lines in and worry about blending through the shelves when there's not much space. So this is kind of how my brain works when I'm choosing a blend. If I know the bottom shelf is going to be yellow, then I know that yellow is going to be on that part of the leg right there. And that way I'm not getting a different color on the shelf, trying to blend everything out. So it's not like, oh man, I just got green on the yellow shelf. It's just, oh man, I just got yellow on the yellow shelf. It's fine. So as I'm picking the colors, I kind of line them up in a row in front of me so I can see how I want them to transition and know that that's gonna be okay. You guys, if you do this on the first coat and you hate it, you can pick different colors because you've already got your base coat down. You can just totally pick different colors your second round. You've seen me do it on a dresser that I've done before. But I love this blend. I had already had it planned out and this is, this is where I want it to go. This is where it will end. <laughs> Okay, now that the black and yellow are dry, it's safe to put tape on them. So I just use my painter's tape, choose whatever size you want your stripes, and you take the one piece and then kind of move it around to be your, your guideline there. I'm sure you guys have seen me tape stripes. I've, I've done it to several pieces. I was gonna do the Harlequin diamonds on this, but if I'm being honest, I got too lazy because I would have had to cut see how it has the curve in the table 
I would have had to cut on my cutting machine and I didn't want to. So, so here I'm using light khaki. It's kind of like a off white muted color and it looks so good against this yellow because it's not so stark and crazy bright. It's just kind of a nice subtle, I think kind of old look. So it matched with this whole thing. So that's kind of what I'm going for. This book is old. It's, you know, it has character and it's aged and like I want the piece to resemble that too. So I'm trying to keep that in mind as I'm designing around it. I do like to do one side at a time because I like to pull the tape while the paint is still relatively fresh. And then you can go back through once you're finished and clean up any kind of tape bleed through that you might have. So I typically clean up the teeniest of areas with the detail brushes. And these are just like little artist brushes you can get them at any store. I've had mine for years, I can't tell you where. It could have been Michael's, Joann's, Hobby Lobby, Walmart, I mean, Amazon, wherever. Just any small artist brush. Okay, now is for the second coat. The second coat, in my opinion, is the easiest coat because you already have your base laid down and you have an idea of what you want. So it just goes a lot smoother and a lot faster. Plus you're not worried about getting coverage on this round. So it's super easy. I sped this up super fast, well into the chair as well, just because you kind of saw the first coat of this and it, I feel like would just be boring if you had to, but it's literally just going back and forth with the two colors until it's a blend that I like. and that's all you're doing. It's just practicing and doing it to where it's something that when you look at it, you're not sad inside. And you can see me moving the table around a lot. That's because anything with legs or small areas, you need to move it around a lot because you will miss a spot. Just assume that you're going to miss a spot. Take the time to kind of pick it up, move it around, um, turn it upside down once it's dry. Don't turn it upside down when it's wet. You'll be sad. But you kind of, you do, you want to move it around and everything. Chairs and stuff are notoriously easy to miss, miss places on, so that's something that you do need to pay attention to when you're doing this, especially when you're blending because gosh, it just really sucks to have to fix an entire leg when you just missed one side. And blends are really, really hard to fix unless you're gonna redo the entire leg or whatever, you know what I mean? Because you, you can't match those colors again. You're, there's no way that you're gonna get your wet paint to blend into your dry paint to do all that. You kinda gotta do everything while it's wet. Okay, now we're using uh, some rub and buff, which is gilding, and it just makes everything so much better. Like everything is right with the world if you can put shiny things on your pieces. <laughs> um, so here I'm doing offset stripes. So it's not a ton of gold, but it's enough to, to make me smile when I look at it. And it just adds a little bit of fancy to something that's 
kind of I don't know like childish so I feel like it this adds something to the piece to where it's not just like oh this has to be for a little girl it's like oh this could also be for maybe an adult who loves Alice in Wonderland we are going to don't worry tone down the rest of the piece as well okay so I'm taking a standing sponge I did not go in between every coat I'm just doing this before I seal the piece because what sanding does here is one smooths out your piece a little which is great but two it also helps your blend because you have your base coat down and this coat as well so it's actually helping those two coats kind of marry together which just is a really cool thing and then i'm also aging the gold on it to make it look just a little bit older here And I'd say my sanding sponge is, it was a 220 at some point, but it is now just much softer than that. <laughs> I, you don't need anything too crazy. So here I'm using antiquing wax. I'm actually going to use this to seal the piece and I'm toning down the colors with this as well. So if you just wanted to seal the piece and keep the colors their regular color, you'd use clear wax or a poly or something like that. But because I want to tone down the colors and help them kind of mesh together and look a little bit aged, I'm just going in straight with the antiquing. If you are nervous about this, seal your piece with clear first and then you can go over it when you're done with the dark wax. Because if you put this on over the top of clear wax, you can wipe it back with additional clear wax. If you put this straight on, the paint absorbs it and you're not gonna get it off. So just, you know, use your discretion. So I'm putting this all on rather liberally and then you let it sit for hmm, at least 20 ish minutes. Let it get in there, let it soak up and then you're going to go through, wipe it back with the cloth and then you can let it sit overnight and kind of buff it. So if you like a matte finish, you don't need to buff it too hard. You're just taking off any excess, excess wax so that when somebody touches it, it doesn't feel kind of waxy and slippery and icky it just feels smooth but you can buff wax out to like a satin finish which is really pretty if that's what you're going for so you have options with the finish on waxes or like I said if you want to do a specific type of finish you can choose a polycrylic and do satin matte whatever you want and then you can still use the antiquing wax over the top or you can use glaze this is just I'm giving you all kinds of ideas this is just what I did it's one step and done so you know the top of the poly the top of the table is sealed with poly because that's going to get use but I still go over the top of it with the antiquing wax because then it helps it match the rest of the piece and fun fact if you wax over poly you get so much more protection because wax is very liquid resistant so I almost on all of my pieces will wax over the top of a poly tabletop because it just gives so much more protection than just straight poly. And so this is kind of my buffing round where I'm going through, I've already wiped the wax back, but I'm just kind of making sure I got everything off and making sure there's no weird areas of wax or anything. And this is gonna be the final step. And then when one of your rags gets saturated with wax, you do need to change it out for another one. So that's perfectly normal. But if you don't change it out for a new rag, you're just gonna smear the wax in. You're not helping take it off. So this is fabric I had left over from the little bench that I did, the little trunk bench chest thing. Um, yeah, I just had extra fabric for that. I had a few others that I was looking at, but this is just so pretty. And I had like the exact amount left to fit this chair. So all I did is I took my staple gun, stapled it on there. I, I mean, this is, if you flip a chair upside down, you can see what to do. It's super easy. 
Um, you do have to measure your staples to make sure that you're getting the right size staple because you don't want anybody to sit down and poke their bottom. And now I'm just putting the seat back on where it needs to go. There's already holes in place for everything, so I just kind of have to line it up to make sure that I can get the screws back in the right spots, which is super easy. Um, I just used a regular screwdriver. I, they're long, and it just would, it was easier than using a drill. So, But yeah, here's the finished piece. Thanks for following along from the beginning of the strip down of the table to getting everything put back together, doing the decoupage on the top, blending out, making a little set. Um, this was really fun for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. Um, yeah. And I will see you guys next week as we do. Please like subscribe, all that jazz.